Rule number nine, hearsay. Hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted. Asserted means stated a fact. So the words statement and assertion mean the same thing. The rule could have been written, hearsay is an out-of-court assertion, but you need to know how the rule was written. We're going to start with an example for this one. Think about a witness named Wally in the courtroom. Wally is asked to testify about a statement that she heard a person named Sam make about going to a movie with the defendant, Darla, at some point in the past. So Sam was outside the courtroom in the past. And Wally in the courtroom is being asked, what did Sam say about going to the movies that time? So whatever Wally heard Sam say about going to the movies would be a statement made in the past outside the courtroom. Now let's give the definition of hearsay again. Hearsay is an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted. There are three portions of this rule to test to determine if the answer is hearsay. Then later, if the answer is determined to be hearsay, it still may be admissible under one of several exceptions that we will discuss at the end. So the three parts of the rule to test to determine if the answer is hearsay are 1. Was the person out of court? When someone was talking in the past, outside of the current testimony being given, then whatever was said was being said out of court. 2. Was it a statement or assertion? Anything that was not a statement would not be hearsay. Let's give you three examples of this. Example one, if Wally heard Sam ask a question, such as, could we go to the movies? That is a question and not a statement, so that would not be hearsay. Example two, if Wally heard Sam grunt and remained completely neutral in body language, that would not be a statement of a fact, and that would not be hearsay. Example three, if Wally heard Sam say, I was with the defendant at the movies the whole time, that is a statement of fact, and it would be hearsay. So this statement would be hearsay if the attorney plans to offer it for the truth of the matter asserted that Darla was at the movies at the time that Sam stated. So that leads us to the third part of testing hearsay. Is the attorney asking the question going to be offering it for the truth of the matter asserted, or for some other purpose. Let's start with that last example. Wally is a witness for the defense, and the defendant is accused of committing a crime somewhere else during the movie's running time. Now, Wally is on the witness stand in our court in a mock trial, and is being asked to testify about what Sam said about the defendant, Darla, being at the movies. If allowed to testify, Wally is going to say, Sam said, I was with the defendant the entire time. That would be an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted. That defendant Darla was at the movies while whatever crime was being committed. So that would be hearsay and therefore not admissible, meaning that Wally could not testify in court to having heard Sam say it. Unless it is a kind of statement that is an exception to the hearsay rule. We'll get to the exceptions in a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. But let's say that Wally testifies, Sam said that Sam left some pruning shears at the defendant's house, and pruning shears were used to commit the crime. And so Wally is a police officer testifying, and Wally went to the defendant's home to search for the shears. In this circumstance, the attorney would not be asking this question to show whether there were or were not pruning shears at the defendant's house. They would be asking this question to show the effect on the listener Officer Wally to show that Officer Wally did go to the defendant's house to investigate whether there were pruning shears present. Sorry. Thus, it is not hearsay as it is not being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. So if the statement turns out to be hearsay, here are the exceptions to the hearsay rule. So as an attorney, you would argue to the judge, in the event that the other team objects, that while this is hearsay, it is admissible as one of the exceptions to the hearsay rule. The first one, A, is a declaration against interest. If someone said, oh yes, I was with Jim and we robbed the store, that's a declaration against their interest of being caught for a crime. B, excited utterance. An excited utterance 
we usually use the example of when someone touches a stove and pulls their hand back and says, ow, oh, that's hot. That kind of statement related to the cause of what they said would be an excited utterance and is an exception to the hearsay rule. And the last one in this set of three, when someone is speaking and saying something that indicates their state of mind, including of intent, plan, motive, mental state, pain, or bodily health. That is admissible. It is hearsay, but it is admissible as evidence. The next two exceptions are not very often run into, and they have to do with business records. Records made in the ordinary course of business, including me medical records, are admissible even though they're hearsay. And also, official records made by public employees and that recorded writing must be in the scope of the employee's duty as a public employee. Then we have two about prior inconsistent statement and prior consistent statements. Prior inconsistent statement is a prior statement made by the witness that is inconsistent with the witness's trial testimony. So that's one where you'd have to be listening for the trial testimony and then come up with on cross-examination, for example, say, well, you said something else out of court before all these events happened. That's a tough one to catch, and we don't face it too often in mock trial, but we could be working on that one in any given year's case packet. And so we are talking about it here, so you have a little bit of frame of reference for it. The other one is the prior consistent statement which can be offered if someone else offers a prior inconsistent statement. With the timing of what we do in mock trial, this is highly unlikely that this one would come up. But these two things, these two exceptions to the hearsay rule are good to know about so that you know what's being talked about if it comes up and someone raises it. Statements for the medical diagnosis or treatment. Again, this one doesn't come up too often in our case packets. Reputation of a person's character in the community is another exception to the hearsay rule. It needs to be at a relevant time of the person being in the community or habitually associating with a community. That is not a frequent one either. A dying declaration is also admissible hearsay. So for example, just as someone is about to die and they say, Casey is the one who killed me would be hearsay as an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter that Casey shot the person, but it would be admissible at trial that day as an exception to the hearsay rule, dying declaration. Then we have co-conspirators statements that come in in regards to a defendant who was acting with someone else, the co-conspirator who's not on trial but maybe they said something that would tend to incriminate the defendant. And so that would be hearsay, but admissible as a co-conspirator's statement. There are two more exceptions to the hearsay rule, adoptive admission and admission by a party opponent. An adoptive admission is a statement offered against a party. And now in mock trial, the only party involved is the defendant. And this adoptive admission is something that the person, the defendant, has adopted as a statement by words or other conduct indicating that the party thinks that that statement is true. The last exception to the hearsay rule is admission by a party opponent. Again, the only party at trial in the mock trial competitions, since they are criminal trials, the only party is the defendant. The party opponent would be the prosecution. So the prosecution can offer anything said by the defendant, and that is an exception to the hearsay rule. So pretty much anything the defendant said in the case packet materials can be offered by the prosecution as evidence of the truth of the matter asserted by the defendant in that statement outside the courtroom previously.